Aloha, everyone, and welcome to the Empowered Hour. My name is Tasha Ine Church, and I am here with Sylvia Smart. Sylvia, how are you doing? I'm great. Thank awesome. you. Well, I have the cliff notes of all the stuff you do, but it's better for people in the audience to actually hear from you uh, the work that you do because it's so much. You have a podcast, you teach martial arts, you also teach empowerment self-defense, you also do, you know, firearms training, like the um, active shooter preparedness trainings. Uh, so you're just doing a lot of different activities, but I would love for them to get a better understanding of your work. Okie dokie. Uh, thank you, Tasha. It's really nice to be here. Nice to have you. Thanks. Um, I really respect your work. So thank you for having, having me here. Um, yeah, I have been, uh, well, I was kind of out of control as a young adult to say it very gently. <laughs> I was kind of, I needed some boundaries and, uh, I did a lot of work around that. And when I was about, uh, 26, I thought, I think it would be really cool to train martial arts. Like, I think that would give me some self-discipline, which I noticed that I have some of, but I think I could, I think I could do with more. So I started this search for like, what martial art do I want to train? And I ended up in Portland, Oregon, and I found a style that sang to me and that made me feel so good. It was an animal style. It's from the jungles of Indonesia. It was incredibly fierce. There was a ton of fighting and like being thrown onto the mat and throwing other people on the mat. And like, it was just so fun. And from the very first class, I was, <laughs> I was just in awe of this thing like who knew that I could get who knew that I could learn how to fall and be safe and not hurt myself who knew that I could flip this big guy boom right over my back and that I could do that and who knew that I could hit so hard and who knew that I could get out there and fight and like pretty dynamic fighting and get my nose broken, you know, many times and other things and like be okay and keep going. And who knew that I could feel this way, like so embodied in my body and so powerful and muscly and, um, and realize how just strong that I am. I didn't know that. And so changed my life. And and very early on, I was very clear that not everybody wants to train martial arts, period. Like we're, we're a specific group of, of people and not everybody is interested or, or should be. Everyone's, you know, some people want to play soccer or go swimming or go hiking or, you know, as well it should be. But everybody does want to know how to protect themselves and everybody does want to feel safe. And everybody does want to feel empowered. And so starting in, um, was it like 90, I think it was, I started a two-year self-defense certification program where we met every um, once a week for like two or three hours and for two years and had homework assignments, read books, did writing, started apprenticing right away. and um, And some of the homework assignments were amazing. Like for something like about a month, we had to go out in public every week and make a scene. Wow. Yeah, just in front of every, like whoever was there on the bus, whoever was there in the plaza, whoever was at the park or the grocery store and just make a scene and start getting really comfortable with um, being uncomfortable. Yeah, that's huge. And yeah, yeah. And um when, as we know, when we're teaching empowerment, self-defense, it's very easy for people to think, oh, I wouldn't want to say anything because I might, you know, that's kind of embarrassing. Well, let me tell you about embarrassing is when you go to the grocery store and you just go like this with a bunch of stuff and say, oh, it's my bad. I'm going to start picking it up. Hi, everyone. You know, like that's embarrassing, but, but I am okay with making a scene. 
Right. And that is a piece of self-defense that I think is really important. So anyway, that was really fun. Started apprenticing, loved the teaching, loved the martial arts so much that um, when my husband and I had two young children, it became really hard for us to figure out how to get our teaching hours in because not only are we training, testing, going up the ranks, I'm a six degree black belt, but we're also, we're also responsible to do some teaching. So we decided, okay, well, let's start a program here on this closer to us. So I started my own martial arts school with my husband and then, um, that's been really wonderful. So continuing my own training, continuing to have students and learn from a really different perspective. It's very, very cool to be a martial arts instructor, as you know, and um, continue teaching self-defense to women and to children. And then there was a breakup of the martial art that I train. And it was um, suddenly I was without a teacher. And so I decided very quickly I needed to, I'm like you, I really wanted to continue my own professional development and my own growth and not be stuck somewhere. So a couple of things happened. I went to the National Women's Martial Arts Federation to get certified to teach self-defense. And I learned a ton about, about what I want to do differently and what I was already doing really well. And um I went to the FBI and did a Citizens Academy with them, and it was really fun. I got to learn a bunch of different stuff from different agents, like cases they're working on or cases from the past and how they solved stuff and digging through garbage. And it was really fun. And then we got to go to the firing range and blow up pumpkins and learn how to shoot guns. <laughs> it was just super, super fun. Um, and from them, I learned a lot of the things that I teach in the active shooter training. Um, in fact, I'm going to one in a couple of weeks, which is more interactive, which I'm not sure what that means. And I'm a little scared. But as you know, we're self-defense instructors. We do things that are scary because we expect other people to. And so we get to do that, too. Um, then through this through the Citizens Academy Alumni Association, I was able to teach alumni who'd been through this program and then was invited to teach hand-to-hand, -hand, like uh, fighting techniques, uh, pad hitting and stuff like that to um, the staff and the agents multiple times on their um, like staff and agent appreciation days. So they're doing all sorts of fun stuff and they get to come like hit stuff and they love it. It's really fun. As they say, they have tactical training, but they don't have the hand-to-hand -hand so much. Um, so that's really fun. And then they have summer camps every year for high schoolers. And I get to teach self-defense to their, the, the kids in the FBI summer camps, which is really fun. Cool. And then, um, I know I'm going on and on, but, um, yeah, I have a podcast during the pandemic. I was like, I think this information is really important. I'm such a geek. I read all this stuff. I do all this research. I like love this field so much and um how do I get the word out a little bit more and I was talking with my kids and my son said why don't you have a podcast and so he became my first editor he made the beats and the you know the music and um and I thought it was a cool idea so yeah so I'm still doing it because it's really fun for me I I love it um I've got one for adults and one for kids oh that's and awesome. I think yeah, and I think teaching kids is really specialized. I think, you know, it's, it's, um, yeah, and I, I feel like it's something I do really well. So, so it's something that I'm really committed to. Um, and then I also have been, I teach private self defense classes, self defense classes to families, scout groups, churches, anyone who wants it dragon boat teams like I'll teach in a park I'll teach in a hallway I'll teach in a stairway like whatever people want and um, <laughs> yeah I'm a closet like what if you're in a little tiny space and you need to fight your way out of it I think yeah, you know, let's learn yeah, yeah let's do it and um and then um I started teaching corporate 
classes to like Nike and Doc Martin and banks that you've heard of and uh, AAA and um, Splunk and different different companies that people have have heard of and and each class is different. I'm teaching now um, in Japan and New Zealand on Zoom for one of the companies next week and um, got to teach in the Middle East and London and. It's really fun. And I'm like, well, hey, if you need someone in person, yeah. <laughs> like, when you're ready, <laughs> send me over to Paris. That's right. <laughs> so anyway, so it's like it's my line of work. It's what I do. It's what I'm passionate about. Um, and that that's my journey. That's how I got here. And I'm a mom. And um I was also uh not aware of the broader community of empowerment self-defense instructors and women martial artists. And I have loved just being part of the, like, I don't know a lot still. I, I'm really busy, so I don't have a lot of time to dedicate it to going to all the camps and all the stuff, but I have been, and I love it when I go. That's awesome. And I loved the people that I meet like you, and there's so many great people doing this work already. And it's, yeah it's well, really cool you learn so much from different people you know uh, yeah. with the kids classes and stuff I, I'm constantly learning um there's a woman in California who does like Girl Scouts all over the world whether it's Zoom nice. or in person and so I'm like oh my god I love that move <laughs> so I'll constantly quote her of like this is this person's move and I use it all the time and all the kids love it you know so it's just great to have that diversity and and um, all of us, you know, supporting one another. Uh, you had mentioned something. This is this was way back, uh, but I, I really it stuck with me um, because you were talking about making a scene, and I teach when I'm when I'm talking to people. Uh, a lot of it, if you have someone who is a home invader, if you have uh, someone who is ready to rape you, uh, you know, assault you in some way, there's very linear thinking. So how to break up that linear thinking, it's it's making a scene or, or doing something along those lines. Have you ever had to do that for yourself, you know, in, in a real life scenario? And if you're willing to share? Right, I, I have been really lucky in my in my self defense life, uh, as once I started training, I did get like nearly raped. I was thrown to the ground and I was able to push my way out of the situation and push the guy out the door and start yelling and stuff. Uh, that's pre any kind of training. Um, and other things like as a woman traveling on my own. Oh, yeah. Just <laughs> yes. <laughs> so much. Yeah. And just being a woman living in the world, like we're dealing with this stuff all the time. Now that I'm a gray hair, you know, like, and a little bit older, not as much as it used to be at all, but people are patronizing, you know, and you got to speak up oh, yeah. <laughs> or, or whatever. Um, but I, you know, I think about sometimes um, that we're maybe in intense in, uh, in a personal relationship, and I don't want to go into details because I don't want to um, break yeah. confidentiality. Um, but there were some times when, when I would, for example, some whatever I was saying wasn't wasn't getting through. I remember taking a glass of cold water and throwing it on someone's face, yeah. and and what that did in that moment um, was it it just was enough of a shock to get the person out of that, that it's mind that like rageful or almost uh, like episodic kind of neuro space that was uh, not functional. And it, it was enough of a shock that then I could be like, okay, so look, look at me, like I'm right here in front of you. So let's talk about this or yeah. let's walk outside, but to like shift the energy, it was just, yeah so I mean that's the closest thing I I can think of off the top of my head well and that that's a great example I think so many times when we think of self-defense we're thinking of uh, this big huge blowout attack of some sort um, thinking of stalking human trafficking all of this other stuff but um friendships 
interpartner relationships, uh, family dynamics, those things happen where there's these blowups and you just absolutely love that person death and there is a blow up. And how do you handle those situations? You know, I've, I've had them myself where, um, you, you love that person, you care about the person and they're disrespecting your boundaries. They're not listening to what you have to say. And it's so important uh, for you and for anyone uh, in their self-defense journey to be able to step up to the plate, say, I have these tools, I'm going to use them. I happen to be using and them. Here you go. Oh, yeah, here you, here you go. Uh, <laughs> You've heard me talk about it now. It's, no, you can just experience it. <laughs> yeah, no, and and it's it's can be a rude awakening for them. Um, but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna I want to interrupt for just a second because I think this whole idea of making a scene it happens. It's really important to feel comfortable with it. I think also down here on the lower end of this spectrum of you know this this continuum of violence because if somebody is staring at my breasts or they're touching me on my butt or you know doing something that's not a blow up that's not a you know a, one of these higher intensity sorts of things that we're talking about if it's lower on the spectrum if I know that I'm comfortable being uncomfortable and I can make a scene down here at this end I also can make a scene down here on this end like I can say in front of three other people to this one person you're touching my breast makes me really uncomfortable take your hand off yeah and I don't give a crap what anyone else thinks of me and that is I think that is part of our self-defense is like we have this saying, I'm in 12 step programs of many. Um, and it's what you think of me is none of my business. And I really, that was a game changer for me because I went through life, early life, so madly concerned about what you thought of me and what you, you know, how you interpreted what I said. And, you know, if I was saying it in a way that you would understand, so you would think a certain way about me because I wanted you to like me and all of that stuff. And once I was able to be like, oh yeah, that's so cool. Like I can be who I am and, and be a kind person and be a sweet person and be a gentle person and be not nice when I have to not be nice, set boundaries if I have to, but being able to not be concerned about what anyone else thinks about that frees me to be who I am. And that is, to me, that is empowerment, self-defense. Like, who are you? Be yeah. that. Like, how can I help you be that? Because you're cool. <laughs> you know, like, you're really cool and you have a gift to bring. Yeah, I, I, well, and I, think, I think all of us do. I, I really, um, I think- what yeah, I'm not, When I say you, I know you're already, you already know this. I'm talking- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking to you yeah. who are watching and who are listening and me right. and all well, of us. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, I, I knew what you, I knew what you meant. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, oh my gosh, so much, uh, you know, we were talking about this, like there's so much to ask and so many things to say. Uh, I, I just love um, your journey. I think that yeah, there's such a process that we we all go through on the spectrum when it comes to our own journey of empowerment. And some of it's messy, some of it, you know, it, it doesn't look pretty. Um, and, and having that discomfort, understanding and being okay with sitting in discomfort. Uh, I think that that's like a huge, um, huge draw. So it, it's interesting. One of the things that you had talked about um, is you know, active shooter training. Um, that's a different part of your work. Uh, I am going to bring this up just because we've had over 200 mass shootings in like the last year. year. It, it's so so tragic, so awful. And um, I guess, you know, there, there's people out there, uh, I, I would assume people out there who uh, are really just struggling when it comes to uh, what what to do, what are maybe like, two tips that you can give them um, for either seeking out support when it comes to that work and the aftermath and, and what could they do uh, during, and if you had any thoughts about um, just the state that we're in with all of these shootings going on. Yeah, I have a lot to say, Um, but I'll, I'll hone it. So, um, 
I just want to be clear. I do not represent the FBI, but I do go to their trainings and I learn a lot from those trainings. And then I do my own research and I talk to people and, you know, that. But I the, the FBI uh, protocol is run, hide, fight. And you can go find the video on YouTube. I think it's run, hide, fight video or something, but, but you can find it and you can get this really great, easy training. It's like five minutes long. And um, those are the three things they want us to know. Part of my training goes into a little bit of Joe and Jill citizenry, which is um, how do we, what role do we play in, in our communities? These, these people that are doing these shootings they're troubled and they are giving off they are leaking signs that they're going to do this yeah they are buying up weaponry vests um, ammo they have maps they're writing things online they're talking to people in their lives, including family, coworkers, um, neighbors, friends. And you can go back through the research of all of these various shootings and find that people close to these people had a feeling something was wrong yes. and didn't say anything. And that's like self-defense. It's like, I had a feeling something was wrong, but I didn't want to believe it of the, my minister. I didn't think he, you know, it's my minister. Like he wouldn't rape me. He wouldn't hurt me. And it's the same. It's like, this is my kid or this is my coworker. I don't want to turn them in. But yeah. so it's a, you know, it's something we need to discuss with our friends. And, and what we know is that when people come together to support somebody who's in this type of crisis, that actually works to help move them to another another place. So the again, the FBI also says if you see something, say something. Yes. If you know something, say something. Yes. And it doesn't mean like here's an example. Can I give you a quick example? Of course, yeah. Okay. So my husband works uh it, with with property management apartments. And one of the things that he was doing, like this was about four years ago, is just going through walkthroughs of different apartments on an apartment complex and making sure that the plumber fixed the sink correctly and that the paint's not chipping and that people are happy in their apartment. And um, he called me and he was like, Sill, what do I do? I was in this apartment with my coworker. This guy has a whole wall that's weapons, maps, uh, like grenades, flak jackets, uh, you know, Kevlar vests. And we were like, hey, wow, you know, it's pretty late. We better go to the next apartment. And we got ourselves out of there as fast as we could. But what do I do? Like, ah. and I said, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to call my contact at the FBI here in Portland. And you're also going to call the FBI tip line and tell them exactly what you just told me. And he did. And he got word back from them like, oh, yeah, we know this guy. Thank yeah. you. Wow. Yes. So it it just helps it helps. It helps. Like the more com we communicate, it's like being at work and there's the guy who's creepy. Yep. Right. Who stares at all the women. Yep. But if we don't talk to each other, we don't know that everyone's experiencing the same thing. Yes. And if we go to human resources, ultimately human resources is like, oh, you're the third person. We better fire this guy. You know, yeah. it's about communicating with one another about stuff. Absolutely. No. Yeah. And I think that it is so important that, you know, obviously your husband had a feeling and whether 
you know, it is a gut feeling or your intuition. Uh, it, it following that is so important. Uh, if um, you were to just say, oh, this person had all of these weapons and different stuff like that, but you weren't getting a bad vibe. In my mind, I'm thinking of devolution and someone who's in some sort of crazy survivalist training thing. Uh -huh. I've seen those people too. But when you suddenly have this gut feeling of like the wrongness, uh, you have to follow that. And, and whether that's um, following that to an FBI tip line or following it to the your local uh, police station or just telling a trusted person in your life so that somebody else can hear it and, and hear yes. it. Uh, it. It's so, yes. so important. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I think about this because so many times um, with, with victims, you know, there, there's a lot of victim blaming that happens of like, oh, you, well, you should have gone and done this, or you should have gone and done that. And um, a lot of times they're, they're following, you know, they, they have this intuition of like, oh, it wouldn't be safe for me to go um, do this thing, or I did this thing. And that's how I survived. Um, you know, so th there's all of these different layers to it. So it is very complicated. But I think that what you're telling us is so important. If you see something, say something, you know, um, run, hide, and last, last resort fight. Um, so, you know, yeah. and, and FYI, she is doing this all over on Zoom. Yes? Yeah, it's on yeah. Zoom. Yeah. And then people can come, people who are local can come hit stuff with me because I like to go through the fighting part. Like, what are some, what are some ways you hit hard? And yeah. like, you know, what are weapons of opportunity? Like big water bottle, a fire extinguisher, hit the guy across the head if you get the opportunity. Oh, I have, um, yeah, I have the best time talking to people and asking them to find three things that they would use for a weapon, you know, because we have all these people who are like, I've never taken a self-defense course ever. And, uh, and then, then they're the ones who are saying, yeah, well, I would just stab them with this, you know, <laughs> like stab them with a knife, stab yeah, them, stab them with this these scissors and then I would hit them over the head and I'm like you seem to know a lot <laughs> seems like you might have thought about this yeah, yeah. yes you have a plan this is good so I think I want to just say with uh just to just to put it in a nice little package I know that there's there's a lot of troubling things with the police these days and with the FBI like I get that and and I think that um like I'm thinking of school kids, like say high school kids. I think if we have concerns about a kid, I think going to the high school is a really good first step, like the counselor and the teachers and the principal, because they're really, they're really well prepared to start looking at this and provide services. And they probably already know some of this as well. It's just more information for them. And you know, I'm just, I just want to say it doesn't have to be that you call the tip line of the FBI. It doesn't, you don't have to call the police, but, but please know that the FBI is actually doing stuff about it. And they're, they're really, they really do want to know, um, and it, but it's a balance and we all have to make that decision for ourselves. Like what layer of, you know, where we're comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's also different based off of community and the type of cultural background you come from. So really just honoring you. I think yes. it's great. Um, I, I was just thinking about this, you know, uh, we were talking about kids and, and I was just thinking if you could give your younger self a piece of advice, what, what would that be? Trust yourself. Okay. And yeah. what I mean by that is, um, is that is that when you're a kid, you're you're really um, enmeshed almost in relationships with your parents and your siblings, and they have a specific perspective of you and what they expect of you and who you are, and there's all this stuff going on internally, and we are feeling beings and we as empowerment self-defense instructors, we know that if you have a funny feeling that something's off or wrong or dangerous or not okay, that's our first line of defense is to, is to uh, like, 
acknowledge that that's what I'm feeling and to notice it and then to make my move depending on my assessment and what, you know, what, where I am and where the exits are and what weapons of opportunity I have and all that. So as a kid, I think that's really, really true is if we can start to teach kids this, like trust your body, your don't trust your mind. Like your mind is being influenced by like, he's my minister. He's my soccer coach. He's my, you know, my next door neighbor. He's my older cousin. Trust your body. Like if your face is turning red and you're kind of shaky and your palms are sweaty. Um, there were so many things I got into and talked myself out of like here and put myself in unsafe situations because I didn't know about how it, how incredible our bodies are yeah oh and and just thinking about you know with gavin de becker's book the gift of fear um he talks about it that you have your body has the collective knowledge of everything that you've experienced from birth until where you're at right now and mm -hmm. so if your body's feeling this negative emotion or if it's feeling resistance it's coming from some way thing yeah thing yeah. yeah um so you know people uh, obviously know that you do this work. I would like them to know how to get in touch with you so that they can get classes from you if needed uh, or wanted because you're amazing. And uh, and then also I want people to know ab about the name of your podcast and how to find it. Awesome. My podcast, uh, the one for adults is called The Empowerment Podcast by Naga, N-A-G-A, which is the name of my martial arts school. And then the kids one is called the Power Up Kids Self-Defense Podcast. So far, that only has five episodes. It's pretty tiny. I'm, you know, working slowly at it, um, but I will not give up. And um, I'm also looking for people who are willing to talk about things that happened to them when they were kids. Like I've got somebody coming on to talk about when he was bullied and stuff like that. Someone else who um, had to deal with incest. And, to, and it's going to be, you know, it's kid friendly. It's not scary. Anyway, those are my two podcasts. And my, my website is nagacommunity.com, N-A-G-A community.com. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Sylvia, thank you so much for coming on. Awesome. And definitely um, we will have those links in the bio section for uh, the YouTube channel for the talk series. And then also on our Spotify channel and anchor. Um, so definitely check those out. And um, thank you so much for joining. Remember to subscribe. And uh, if you subscribe! saw subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if you had just some amazing ahas from this experience, I know I did, uh, definitely put those in the comment section as well. Thank you so much, everyone, and aloha. Aloha. <laughs>